You're watching Awani Review with me, Soraya Mia. As most businesses run into a buzzsaw during the first movement control order, MCO, and are recently only recovering, the economic recovery hit a speed bump with MCO 2.0. What about startups? How will those in the startup industry face a second lockdown and possibly another year of uncertainty? Is it a room for opportunity, challenges, or both? Today, I will be speaking to Patricia Lim Banki, an ex-regional banker, an angel investor in the circle of angels, and the co-founder of a blockchain company that tracks impact for entrepreneurs. Hi, Patricia. I appreciate you being here on Awani Review today. All right, let's just get straight to the point. As we begin the year 2021, MCO 2.0 happens, and we cannot deny the challenges that arise as uncertainty resurfaces. So what are the main challenges faced by the startup industry and what do you think we can expect for startups in 2021, Patricia? Hi, I think the key challenges are sustainability and scaling up the businesses. So um, as far as I know, actually, um, what are the key challenges are usually funding and um, application for loan for startup. Funding has been very difficult only because uh, many businesses are impacted as well. And as for loan process, it has taken longer and um, uh, the approval process are harder to approve as well. So for startup, I think depending on which stage of startup you are at, but I think it is uh, it hit the hardest on um, the seed round of um, startup investment because seed rounds are also the highest risk. Yes, and um, a lot of startups are facing a lot of um, logistic and distribution. That is also key challenges because efficiency is low now. And um, for normal time for shipping overseas, I mean, usually it takes about two weeks. Now it takes about a month because you have to practice security measures, including the standard SOPs, etc. And what are the pros? The pros are that a lot of business models are pivoting from B to C to B to B, uh, B to B, to, from B to B to B to C business model, because the sectors for online customer has improved significantly due to the lower acquisition costs for consumers. Post COVID, as you are aware, many uh, custom consumers are buying products online, and they are a lot more um, well healthy and, and um, health uh, aware because they are more conscious about eating well and um, buying products online. Yep. All right, so the problem, one of the problems faced by startups uh, in 2020 especially would be cash flow, which um, results in a harder time for startups to tide over in order to sustain. So do you think pivoting is requir required or possibly a change of business model? Yes, redefining and pivoting business model to online space post-COVID is vital. And I know many startups has already been doing it since even last year, depending on which industry you're at. But of course, uh, keeping a lean team and um, really looking at your cost control and cutting on cost is important and spending on just the necessary items are required. And as for digitization process, actually, we will talk more on that on question five. And um, what starts, startups are facing is also um, a lot of delay in payment cycle. In the past, maybe they get paid in 30 days. Now they're getting paid at 45 days and even 60 days, especially if you're um, on, offline on the retail sales side. And they are, they're seeing that it's harder to hit their sales revenue projected. So of course, in, in, in this instance, cash flow projection needs to amend if business demand has um, reduced significantly, right? So. Consistent demand for funding was still always required post-COVID because it has actually impacted and changed the business environment significantly. So a lot of startups are actually looking for international investors and VCs for funding and uh, across the region. Yeah. All right. So you mentioned uh, funding. So last year, there's an initiative by the government. It's uh, called the Panjana Capital Initiative to help attract investors to invest in local startups. What do you think about this initiative and what do you think would be the best help that the startup would need the most? I think actually I have spoken to many startups on this initiative and uh, unfortunately some of them have heard about it, but a lot of them have not heard about it as well. It is a great initiative besides funding that is best practice sharing and knowledge-based transfer for the Malaysian startup. 
But I will also recommend a main central inquiry hub for all government initiatives for Malaysian startup to connect and con connect and contact to. This is only because presently I think it is still very decentralized. There's a hotline number where you can call and you can write up for application. But in general, sometimes they say it's hard to get someone to really speak to. So I think actually more marketing promotions are required for all these government initiatives to raise um, awareness so that this can actually encourage more startups to apply to all these government funding and initiative. All right, startup ecosystem in Malaysia, where do we stand? And what do you think needs improvement in order for the startup, the local startup to progress and thrive post pandemic? I think Malaysia is still in the midst of uh, building its ecosystem. Identifying which key ecosystem players are crucial. I know we have a lot of um, actually incubators, accelerators, um, co-working space, payment gateways, um, logistic um, distribution channels and all. But I think um, for the strategic partners, we are talking about public, private and government sectors are important. And I think we really need to connect the dots in order for startup to try, flourish and be successful so they know where to go to, you know, and who to go to. Um, while the startup ecosystem has been supported by the Malaysian government, I think there's still a distinct lack of private sector partic participation in Malaysia compared to, for example, um, Singapore and uh, Indonesia, where investments are made a lot of from direct, uh, foreign direct investment as well as large family offices. In Malaysia, I don't see there's so many of that. and we need to boost more startup culture so that we can create an environment for entrepreneurship in Malaysia if we really want to be inspired and to be top of the startup hub um, and inspired to be one uh, say, the top startup hub in ASEAN. So startups are actually requesting for more awareness and education in this space. So for example, identifying which are the key players in the market for strategy Partners, and we are talking about not just the top players only, but also the secondary market players will be crucial as well, I think. All right, Patricia, you did mention uh, a lot of times about digitization. It's a huge opportunity for startups to expand and roll out new services across the region, not only in Malaysia. What do you think uh, about this and, and, and how do you think this could benefit in general? I think COVID has definitely accelerated the digitization trend at an unprecedented pace. And everyone, I mean, in today's world is on phone and internet anyway, you know. So mm -hmm. any company has embraced technology and digitization, I think. So, for example, rolling out an e-commerce platform. And as I've explained before, a lot of the startups are actually pivoting from business to business to business to consumer B2C model. And they need to do that, especially if they are online, because if they don't, they will die, right? I mean, so more demands now are on online versus offline, especially if you're selling products. So digitization on brand awareness and marketing via Instagram, Facebook, um, and, and um, LinkedIn, etc., are crucial. So startups are actually doing product variations as well digitally to increase actually customer retention for product services as well as offerings. Um, and I actually think digitization has enabled startups to actually sell products to cross country, um, especially, for example, like Singapore, Indonesia, Vietnam and Taiwan and, and to different dif different regions via distribu distribution partners. So building knowledge and expertise on digitization for startups are key, I think, and especially if you really want to digitize your entire operation process to selling. And so to me, I think where where can startup actually refer to and connect for both local and international net network expertise for digitization program is important, especially to automate the entire um, value chain process from operation all the way to selling the products is key. And many startups, I, I don't think they know where to look for for um, digitization program and especially for network on digitization. I mean, there are some, but it is not very um, obvious and they don't, don't, don't really know where to find it, in Malaysia especially. So, I mean, in my humble opinion, I actually think tech and tech enabled company will um, do very well going forward and you need to embrace um, digitization whether you like it or not this year. Yeah. I definitely agree. And there is definitely a lot 
more room to explore and learn in, in terms of the digital world. But um, that's about all the time that we have today. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and insights, Patricia. And to the viewers, thank you very much for watching. We will see you guys again soon. Thank you. Thank you.